we come from the place where the power of individuality wasn't something that people reckoned with. We come from the mm. place where if you do something and you are not a part of a group, you are considered mm -hmm. a villain. And therefore, communism and people were forming yeah. groups. And basically, that says it all about the mentality. So if you're different, mm. you're a villain. That was mm. the mentality in the Soviet Union. Right now, yeah. we are actually putting this history of, of ours to bed. We're a modern, new, progressive country with so, so many inspirational stories of entrepreneurs yeah. or companies that do worldwide businesses. Steve Jobs, um, in his famous speech uh, at Harvard or at Stanford, I don't remember, he said that yeah. you can only connect the dots looking backwards. Well, Sergey, uh, you are in Ukraine and I, I, I don't think just me, but a lot of people are very curious as to understand how you are doing, how is Ukraine doing. Although, you know, on this pod, uh, I, I actually want to talk a lot about your business and what you have been doing and how you built everything from ground up. And I would also like to understand a little bit more about the Ukrainian culture. And like when I say culture, right, I just don't mean like the language, but also, you know, what are the values of people who live there? And how, how do you see those values being helpful for what you are doing? At the same time, you know, there are adjustments that you have to make as a culture to kind of adapt with the global world we are living right now. Apart from that, you know, feel free to share whatever you, you'd like to share with us. And with that, thank, thank you so much for sharing your time and story with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, sounds like a plan. So let's yeah, get into yeah, yeah. it. Yep. So how about we maybe start, you know, uh, how you got started? How was college like for you? How was it like to even, for example, grow up in Ukraine? And uh, let's start from the beginning. Okay. Yeah. I went to this college, the university, uh, the international economics sort of uh, faculty that was supposed to prepare me for specifically doing business internationally. Yeah. However, yeah. I wasn't the student that my mom or dad would proud of. You know, it yeah. just so happened that I didn't pick any interest like in in accurate sciences and math and finances and economics. So, yeah. but the only thing that I did pay attention to was uh, English, the English language. Hmm. So yeah. I realized uh, pretty fast in my life that uh, I'm a language person. Mm -hmm. I, I'm into languages. And uh, funny thing, I didn't start learning it right away. You know, mm -hmm. I, I kind of, took me some time to understand that I like the language. So I started uh, uh, learning it maybe as I was actually graduate, graduating from un my university. Yeah. And um, I started obsessively learning the language by looking for foreign business people because business was something that also uh, was on my ra radar. I never, ever wanted to do business locally. For some reason, I just wanted... Because I was in fun of NBA basketball, I played basketball myself, and I was, yeah. and I was a big fan of the NBA, and I would watch basketball and listen to the uh, NBA commentators, right? And yeah. th th this was part of me actually falling in love with the English language, American yeah. English, for this matter. So all these things combined resulted into my interest towards, you know, business and doing business with uh, Americans. Wow. And, and I realized that I, I didn't have the, uh, the, that the comment of English that would allow me to do that. So I yeah. started seeking out 
foreigners, English native speakers in Ukraine back in 2012. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. And that had that how it all started with me, like pretty much uh, I, I found a person who I was like, I, I was assisting him with little errands. He came to Ukraine uh -huh. back in 2012. So I was like his, his uh, right hand or left hand, whatever. And I, yeah. I was able to, to kind of um, absorb so much from him. And yeah. Um, yeah, and then my first job was maybe not the first job, but first English speaking job. I was working as a support, as a support team member in yeah. uh, one company that was actually based in Ukraine, but that would serve yeah. customers from the uh, United States and from Canada and from other yeah. developer, developed uh, economies. So growing up, it, was, it wasn't like that easiest thing, thing to do because you, as, as Ukrainians, you still experience this post-Soviet kind of heritage. And uh, mm -hmm. my parents didn't understand why I would spend time learning the language. My dad wanted me to go like, into construction industry or whatever. He wanted me to be this sort of an accountant or whoever. But I, I didn't do well with, uh, with numbers, so it wasn't for me. And yeah. so it was kind of a struggle in terms of uh -huh. psychologically. It wasn't easy to do it. Uh -huh. But... I just, I just wanted to, you know, to challenge myself and prove to myself that I, I can start a business globally. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you know, the thing that a lot of entrepreneurs, they have like a trauma in the, their childhood that kind of drive yeah. this desire to prove to the outside world yeah, that, yeah. you know, we're capable of something. I think this is something that's partly me, you know. But the yeah. other part of me is that I always was a, a dreamer and I'm, and I'm still am a dreamer, you know, and, and I just wanted to chase this uh, dream of mine where I could do business uh, global. So, and I worked as a support team member where I actually uh, enhanced my English, my verbal English and my ability to communicate with American customers. We would work at night. Uh, we were, yeah. we would, uh, that was just uh, such such a cool period of my life where we were just doing something that we would never think we could do, you know, serve people. And uh, so and anyway, uh, after that, we yeah. I found a, a guy who shared my idea, shared my aspiration, and we yeah. actually decided that we could do the same, like we can help people in the same way that this company that we were working for was helping people. So yeah. but pretty yeah. much we copied their business model and um, fast forward to a couple of years, we, well, we, were, we were bootstrapped for about maybe a year, year and a half. We were called yeah. calling, we were called calling at nights. We would call, call, we would call, call uh, people in the United States. And that was the most intimidating thing I ever done in my life, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. In the, in a in a in a foreign language, you're calling to a different country at night, and you try yeah, to yeah. close your first deals. And lo and behold, it did happen. We did close our first customers, who became our loyal like suppliers. So they would supply us with orders, you know. Yeah. Because. Basically, the company that they were working with ha had flaws, and we knew the flaws that they had. So yeah. we just uh, capitalized on on this knowledge, and we yeah. started working. So yeah. for for a couple of years, we were just going on our own, trying to take one step at a time and grow the business. So we were making like 10, 15, 20k in revenue. Mm -hmm. And, but then we, at some point, we realized that the revenue stream is so, so, so unstable. We, yeah. that we, we, we were really stressed out because every single month we had to pay salaries to our employees and yeah. we had to borrow money to do that. 
because yeah. we couldn't make our kind of ends meet, you know, in terms of uh, financial balance. That 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 took us to the next phase of our development. We decided to pull in the investments. So it was the year two thousand, I think, eighteen. Oh no, sixteen or two thousand sixteen. And uh, yeah. finding a venture fund or angel investor in Ukraine. Yeah, I I can I. I I, I don't want to say like an impossible task, but it was really tall, yeah. tall task. Yeah, we I remember how we were chasing people in, in different networking events. We're trying to find people who we thought would have the money, you know, and be interested. Yeah, and the entire summer of that year, we spent on looking for for financing, and we actually got lucky. You know, yeah. they say luck is the result of the number of countless attempts. That's exa- I can testify yeah. to this truth, man. We were, we didn't, we all, we were, all, we were always like we we almost decided to like give up, but we got lucky and uh, we found a guy on LinkedIn who. He is now one of the biggest venture uh, fund owners in our country, but back then yeah. he was hiding. So it was just my wild guest. I, I sent him a message on LinkedIn, and uh, luckily for us, everything uh, happened like well for. I mean, it, it worked for us, and and they invested like 150k into uh, into yeah. into our business at that point. Yeah, so. Two years, I, I had two years of work uh, with uh, these powerful investment group that they didn't, did not only bring the cash, they also brought the smart money, though their, their expertise to the table that, that leveraged our business so much. So we, we, we were able to finally make money or hire more people and yeah we're, if if the first four years we were startups bootstrappers now we were learning the skill of being managers of hiring people of motivating motivating personnel of yeah. um, you know things all, all things that you can imagine you know being a part of uh, e-commerce full cycle product business you know yeah, and in 2019, I had an argument. I have some tension with my co-founder. He yeah. was displeased with me. I was displeased with him. Or I, I don't know. I don't even. I don't don't want to dig into it too much. But yeah. uh, it just so happened that I was asked to leave. So um, mm-hmm. I converted my stock. So basically, it happened in 2019. Yeah. For about two years, I was trying to launch some other businesses. I actually tried to launch an English school for children in China, a digital mm-hmm. online English school. And I also yeah. had a partner from from China, from Shanghai. And it, and it actually fell apart before it even started. You know, so at least I didn't spend that much time there. And yeah. so right now what I'm doing, I'm, I decided that I finally want to bring my knowledge and my talents home. I want to help mm-hmm. the new generation of Ukrainians with their career and business goals yeah. on the international scale. And I think yeah. that um, I'm capable of doing it and I'm just having fun with this new chapter in my life. Hmm. You know, uh, when I'm listening to the story, right, I'm actually thinking that, you know, in the beginning, you mentioned that your parents were uh, not confused, but like intrigued as to why are you learning English? Skeptical, yeah. Skeptical, right. So what what is their perspective now? After, you know, you have done what you have done already. What do they think? Yeah, now? yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, it's a good question because I, I I would want to say that they feel like I made it, but yeah. it's just this type of mentality of people who were born in the Soviet Union. If they don't understand something, they don't understand yeah. something. The only thing that they understand is me being able to support them financially or buy them some pres presents. That's something that that they can understand. But the way yeah, I do yeah, that, yeah. I don't think my dad or my mom actually understand what I'm doing. And that's okay. That's fine. I just want to make them yeah. um, happy and to have great, comfortable life right now. So, you know, you also mentioned that uh, there is a Soviet uh, cultural background that that kind of made them, I would say, be skeptical in the beginning. Yeah. Right. So, could you also, like, I am not aware about the Ukrainian culture or the Soviet culture. I won't say at all. Like, I, I just have glimpses of it. So, could you maybe share, like, little more context as to what do you mean by that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. We come from the place where the power of individuality wasn't something that people reckoned with. We come from the mm. place where if you do something and you are not a part of a group, you are considered mm -hmm. a villain. Mm. And therefore, communism and people were formed yeah. in groups. And if you, and, and so basically, that is that that says it all about the mentality. So if you are different. Mm. You're a villain. That was mm. mentality in the Soviet Union. Right now, yeah. we are actually putting this history of, of ours to bed. We're a modern, new, progressive country with so, so many inspirational stories of entrepreneurs yeah. or companies that do worldwide businesses. Yeah. And this is something that we want to scream about. We want the world to understand about Ukraine, that we yeah. are becoming a startup nation. We are becoming, yeah. we already have companies that make huge, like big impact on the world, but they're gonna, gonna be even more of them in the, these next uh, you know, years to come. Yeah, I see. So if, if that was the kind of, let's say, uh, culture you experienced when growing up, what, what do you think kind of made you understand that, you know, uh, okay, I, I am slightly different. And if I work on, okay, this four to five ideas, like learning English, trying to build your own business, like what, from what you are saying, right? It, it sounds to me that these are radical ideas. Absolutely. Yeah. No. And trying to challenge the status quo, trying yeah, to think yeah. differently. And you have to introduce yourself to the world. You know, yeah. you have to look, look at the examples of like, I remember I was incredibly inspired by the company called HubSpot. They mm, are yeah, the yeah. marketing agency. They had the, their um, marketing conferences. And I yeah. was just taken away by things that they would say about the inbound marketing, about that outbound yeah. marketing. The cold calling that we yeah. did is no longer a thing. That the inbound marketing, love, you know, something that you share with your customers, care. Yeah. You, so, you know, this concept ABC always be closing. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. from the 80s, from Jack Welch sort of, T type of yeah. thinking it's no longer the case it's we, yeah. we 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 give value to people and we would yeah we just say that hey we offer this value if you're interested yeah come on this journey with us we're not imposing yeah. sales we're not imposing our will on anyone the thing that was yeah. such a breakthrough for me understanding that but just but just watching all these American shows, Friends, yeah. So I, I just I just liked it, man. I liked it. 
I don't know if I, if I was in a minority, probably, but there are yeah. more and more people now who want to, who want to do businesses uh, globally. And uh, I really like the trend. I see. So, you know, let's say you, uh, you uh, got this understanding, right? W was there also like a voice in, in your head kind of, you know, not stopping you per se, but like, it was there like a skeptic inside of you as well. In the sense, okay, yes, I'm investing so much time in it, but what if it does not work out? It's the, the, this, the skeptical voice that the, this, this person is, still exists in me. You know, mm -hmm. this, these are two counter powers that coexist in me. Because yeah. you got to pay your bills. You got to support yeah. your family. And if you're chasing a dream that's not not paying you a dollar, it could be yeah. such a such a tough bargain. Hmm. But I think it's okay to do things that bring you money, but you should or in the moment, but you should never forget about your big goal or something that you at least owe yourself to try. Without trying, yeah. it, you, ju you 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 gotta try and fail. I understand that it, you tried at least. A lot of people they they don't try. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, you know the idea that you want to help other Ukrainian businesses to go global. Where, where do you feel that comes from? Like, is, is that like a challenge you faced yourself? And now that you have been able to build something for your own, you kind of feel that you know you can maybe do it for other businesses. It's all about product market fit. For us, for entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. I think we, we solve problems. We find the mm -hmm. pain in it. With, with, we understand at some point that we have enough expertise to, yeah. to help people ease the pain. Though so there is yeah. a huge pain right now. For, not mm. a huge pain, but we have a lot of companies, so a, lot of, a lot of people who already speak English. But... I'm not only about helping people with English knowledge. I'm about efficient communication but based on understanding human psychology, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Feels, feels to me that it's, it, it's, it's just a perfect, perfect, perfect match. You know, it's a perfect fit yeah. for me right now. And I've been doing things that I didn't really want to do as i look at in 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 hans hindsight at the things that i did i don't yeah. even think that i wanted to do the business i didn't want to work with in when investors no i wanted to start something i wanted to create something but as i created it yeah. it required the optimization and, and and administration and management and it's not something that i enjoyed man I, I yeah. like to start things. I like to inspire people to start things or I like to inspire people to change. This is what yeah. I'm about. And therefore, I finally realized that maybe this, sir, this business that would provide services rather than products is my path. Yeah. Because with services, you help people improve in whatever they want to improve and, and really make an impact on their life. So that's the way for me to help to help my country be yeah. represented in the best possible way across the world. Yeah. Could could you also share a little bit as to, you know, uh, how it was to build the first business that you built in the sense, you know, what what kind of products were you selling or how how difficult was it? To let's say, you know, convince not just the customers, right, but also maybe your team members and your partner. Like, how was the whole process look like? Yeah, that's a good question. We were we were we were doing things with our back against the wall for the most part because the mm -hmm. uh, product. I can say that it was illegal, but it was fraud upon or a bit unethical. We would mm -hmm. help students, lazy students mm -hmm. in the United States with their homework. So they mm -hmm. didn't want to write their papers on their own. And yeah. 
you know, it's, it's, and, and that was a huge industry. It's still a huge industry, right? In, really? In the, really, man. I mean, it's, I think wow. they, it's like half a, not huge in terms of like, if you compare it to other markets, but like half a billion dollars per year is the overall volume of the market could be now, maybe up to 1 billion. So wow. students just don't want to, and you know, if you, if you think about it, a lot of students just, they follow their, like some path and, and some subject that they need to pass are not like a part of this path, you know? So I always yeah. think to myself like, okay, I didn't like, I actually didn't like, I, I couldn't like come into a networking party and say, hey, I do this because I kind of yeah. feel, felt ashamed a little bit. But as I think about it now, not like I yeah. want to exonerate myself or, or exonerate the market, justify it. Yeah. But I understand right now that education is designed in a way that it forces people to take the classes that they don't want to take and that they don't want to connect their life with. And mm. that if the education started with, you know, with this personalized, personalized approach and they, that yeah. and students could take the classes that they have passion for, maybe they wouldn't yeah. even get this, like, use services like we, like ours to write the papers for them in math or in physics or in, or yeah. in chemistry, you know? Yeah. But it was difficult to sell this idea. It was difficult to, it was not just difficult to hire people because pe people in Ukraine were enticed by this idea to, to earn money in dollars, to yeah, practice yeah. their English, you know? So, we, but, but I remember distinctly how I couldn't sell the entire idea like this. Yeah. Like it's not something that you can go for IPO with. It's not something that the Forbes magazine or whatever business uh, outlet would write yeah. about you. Yeah. 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 I see. So n now that you know you are that, that you are out of that business and you're working with other businesses to help them go global, right? What kind of, you know, companies you are working with right now? So right now, okay, let me get, get straight. I, I'm starting right now. It's not like I figured okay, it okay. all out. So I'm starting yeah, yeah. right now. Yeah. And for now, I'm only working with individuals. Right, mm -hmm. who who represent their businesses, but I can extrapolate the services that I offer for individuals, and I can offer them to groups. So things that I do, for example, just prepared a lady who who is a CEO of an e, e gaming company for a yeah. web summit in Lisbon. She needed yeah. she needed to present her business in English yeah. and to give herself an opportunity to bring investments. So I prepared for, yeah. I ha I'm helping people with uh, speech writing for and yeah. uh, helping them deliver their ideas, their deep ideas publicly. Yeah. Run meetings or do nego like close deals, negotiate with, uh, with people. But again, all from the position of love. I'm not, I'm not teaching them to close by whatever, but whatever meant possible. That's not about me. I'm just helping them to communicate their truth in the best possible way. Same thing applies to uh, company presentations. So I work with recruiters who needed to sell his company because when you're hiring, it's not like they need to present themselves. You present your business first, right? So yeah. when yeah. they're hiring high profile candidates, they need to sell their business. And, um, and I also have this customer, uh, customer support, customer care the training. So where I just uh, can help people to uh, be more sort of customer driven, you know, but it, it all starts with the business owner, but then I work with the, I can work with a group of people to help them find these, the, the style of communication. In, in which they would be much more supportive and friendly and caring yeah. 
of their right. customers. So I'm really excited about this. I, I'm smiling as, I, as I'm saying this. That, that's where I understand <laughs> that I like this. Yeah. Thanks for asking. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you, so, you know, you say that you help people with writing and form in English, but have you maybe considered being a representative of like yourself? In a way, you talk, because you speak really well. You have, you have an energy about you that, you know, it's easy for you to talk. Like, I don't know you, but it was so easy for both of us to just connect and start talking, right? So have you, have you maybe considered, you know, being the guy who talks on behalf of all these businesses with, with the foreign companies, maybe? Mm. Never thought of this. For some reason, I just want... So my goal is to help the, the, the widest number of people, the biggest number of people. And I think mm -hmm. that this is possible if I teach. And there's just something okay. about teaching that I really, really enjoy. I just want yeah. people to... You know, it's like so rewarding yeah. when you see that the person got, got something that you share with them. And is, as a result, it made their life much better. So it's, yeah. yeah. So why, why I am uh, sharing this with you, because I, I really have a feeling that, uh, you know, you, you, really, you really need to put yourself out there in a very big way. And there, there are a few things that I also learned myself while doing the podcast. Uh, you know, for, a, I would say, four or five years, a lot of my friends just kept on telling me that, you know, uh, you you can speak, but you are not really leveraging your speaking skills in a better way. Like there is a better way to do this. Does it make sense? Yeah. And I kinda kept I kinda kept on telling them, you know, I I I understand what you're saying, but I don't know what to do with it. And only after I actually started the podcast and started talking to people from across the globe, right? It kind of made sense to me. Like I I called up my friend and I'm like, you know. You have been telling me this for so many years that I should do something with my speaking and it makes sense. But it made sense after I did the podcast. So I complete, so, so because I owe a lot to that friend of mine who kept on kind of, you know, poking me with this idea yeah. that yes, you speak and you can explain things to your friends and your family, but how about you take it to the next level? And I just did not know what the next level was. Until I started the podcast, right? And while talking to you, right, it feels to me that, yes, writing and design and presentation and, and the way you are doing, you should do that. But maybe your presentation skills, right? Like the way you speak, you, you, you are a very emotive person. Your, your face is also, you know, talking in a non-verbal non way while you're speaking. So how about you, you figure out a service or a podcast or a workshop or an online school where you teach English to businesses, right? I don't know what you need to do to get there. But how about you, you take this entire self that you are and do something with it? What do you think? You, you nailed it on the head, man. I, 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 I think like what I'm actually thinking of right now, I'm already started developing this uh, digital course mm -hmm. cheap one and for yeah. ten dollars you yeah. can get an access to this course where i'm where, where, where i will teach the techniques mm -hmm. w with which you can you can present yourself better but i think mm -hmm. the other under like underlying cool thing that i realized from what you just said is that if i want to make the impact the, 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 yeah. as, as big as I can, as I possibly can. Maybe I think of mm -hmm. the coverage in terms of like media coverage or whatever. So if I just, mm -hmm. if because with podcast, it's so scalable, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Millions of people can, it is, can, it is check, check, scary, can yeah. check out the one, one, one episode. So, and if they like it, I think they have this natural desire to share it or whatever, right? So, yeah, that's a really good advice. I'll, I'll think about it. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, we're, we're, all the time we get, a, get 
tied up with something that we do now, you know, and it's so <laughs> sometimes it, it just so inconvenient to accept the truth that maybe there is a better way, but I, I kind of learn how to receive fed feedback and that's a, it's a, it's an art of receiving feedback and not taking oh, yeah, it yeah, personally yeah. let yeah, let yeah. it hang there just then try to take it and understand that maybe these the, the thing that about feedback is that uh, you should separate an opinion from facts right so oh, a lot yeah, of people yeah, yeah. They, they give feedback this is just their opinion but if you think of it and it, it actually facts then you can do something with this valuable information. So, so I'll definitely think it, about it. So, so the idea that, you know, just again, brainstorming, right? Just thinking out loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you are pitching yourself as a communication expert mm -hmm. that can help company, help companies increase their revenue yeah. by making sure that, you know, they are, they are, they are clear about what they have to say. So how about maybe you start a podcast, you invite other communication experts from across the globe, America, Australia, Canada, UK, Germany, mm -hmm. and you talk about how they do it. And in the process, right, you will not just gather information. That is just one of the things you will gather. You will also build a very valuable network with all the experts in the industry and if they're really good right they're always looking for for more people to join their team now i'm not saying you can join their team but every now and then right you all can maybe share business with each other collaborate or something absolutely yeah yeah, yeah that's because that's a cool idea yeah. yeah yeah and so i'm experiencing experiencing something like this even with our podcast right we are not trying to maybe grow our business directly with the podcast. I am trying to do the podcast because I just love speaking. And, you know, this kind of gives me a platform to connect to people just like yourself. Like in, I can do 100 other projects, but I will never be able to have this conversation in any other project. Right. Human connection. Yeah. And what's yeah, your yeah. What's your business uh, doing? Can you share... Definitely. So, uh, you know, we uh, started uh, working as a design agency. By that, I mean, you know, you use apps on your phone and on the internet. So somebody has to design the apps and develop, develop those apps. So mm -hmm. we kind of saw that as a good market in 2016. And it's still like a very growing market. So we were still in college at the time. And we kind of taught ourselves how to design apps and websites and how to also develop apps and websites. So we were more like a design development agency in the beginning. And, and we kind of figured that, you know, maybe we can take this skill set and build our own product and raise funds and build our own startup. Yeah. But before doing that, you actually have to learn how to do all those things. So maybe, you know, we know design, we know development, but building a company is a very different ballgame altogether. So to learn that, I joined a company that was based out of Singapore. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a uh, Web3 company. They were working in the blockchain space. Yeah. And, the, and the problem they were solving is, uh, is to help you secure your cryptocurrencies, right? And... So working with them, I got a chance to eventually go to New York with the mm -hmm. team members. So we lived there for like months and, you know, we just understood how to build that product, how to pitch to investors, how to, how the American markets work in the Web3 space. And while I was there, right, I understood, oh, wait a minute, for so long, I was just living in the darkness because there are so many things people and companies are doing here which back in India, I could never even think about. And podcasting was one of it. I used to meet so many founders in these meetups, right? And I used to ask them, like, you know, what do you do? And they'll tell me, you know, right now I have a job. On the side, I run a podcast. And very soon, I'm going to start a company. And I, I would just ask them a lot of questions because this was news to me. I did not know that you can do that, right? Yeah. 
and so i kept on asking questions i kept on asking questions and what one dear friend of mine kind of just suggested that you know why don't you start a podcast yeah and 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 that kind of stuck with me so when that project got over right i kind of found the time and started started doing the podcast so right now like we keep the whole business uh, running by by consulting startups as to how they can build products and so and we use all that money right to keep the whole shop going pay all the bills and we also do the podcast at, at the same time it's it, it all ad, ad, adds up so much so well right i, I yeah, remember yeah. steve jobs um in his famous speech uh, at harvard or at stanford i don't remember he said that yeah. you can only connect the dots looking backwards so you oh, can yeah. never understand why Completely you do things negative. but when <laughs> you look at things it's, it's see you see that everything was meant to happen like all the yeah. things that you did in your life they kind of took you to this place in life where you're at yep. right now so yep. it's a, it's an inspiring story moment yeah yeah and you, you know since you built a business on your own right and i just became a fan of people who build things on their own like i don't know uh, if you, if you tell me that you know yes you have a job and okay that's fine but if you are putting an extra effort into creating something of your own i am your fan already right and so the so the idea behind the podcast right was to bring people like this on because you really have to be slightly crazy to build something of your own you know what i yeah. mean absolutely yeah, yeah no no matter what country you are in okay you are in ukraine or america or germany does not matter but if if you have this need to create something of your own and kind of put it out there in the world then i i want to know why you did that you know like what made you do that is is it your childhood is it your family is it something you read like for you right you mentioned oh you used to watch the nba right yeah 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 and i i'm i swear to god right every person i'm talking to just the smallest of things you know kind of bring inspiration in people and they end up doing very crazy things yeah. so every time i talk right it's like what how, how did that happen you know agreed yeah wonders never cease you know this phrase so I, and i yeah, i yeah. also like i i admire people who tap into unknown and do something that uh, no one no one or only a few people did yeah. you know and yeah, yeah. it just talks so much to their urge yeah so i don't know uh, the whole podcasting idea i'm sharing from very personal experience you can do it and you know if even if you let's say need any kind of getting started tips to start a podcast we can get on a call again and we can discuss that also Absolutely. i would actually love to i would love to hear you talk to experts from across the globe and and build a brand out of it that would be fun yeah i'll i'll give it a thought thank you <laughs> thank you for the advice yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so you, you know i actually also wanted to uh, ask you about your upbringing and how was your childhood like because from from what i'm trying to understand i think you had a very different upbringing from what you are doing right now from a psychological perspective you like your thoughts kind of evolved over the years and when when you say that you know uh, the culture there is has a lot of soviet influence so i i won't say it's the opposite of what you are doing right now but you you can kind of also feel that there is an like an evolution of thought inside of you yes that, like, that like, is correct and so right. my upbringing I I I'm you know I I watched this TED talk recently where mm -hmm. a guy was sharing this instrumental idea that people change people do change in the in yeah. in the in a radical way so in 20 years from now we might not even recognize ourselves now we we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll be this 
completely different human being, you know? Yeah. And this is exactly what happened to me. And I'm, I'm a different person than I was like in my, in my upbringing, in my teenage years, I was a shy, shy boy who had problems with ladies. Yeah. So I, you know, so I talk, I, we spoke about some trauma. So that was part of it. I, yeah. I didn't get what I thought I, I could get or I was left out, you know. Yeah. I didn't join the parties and things like that. And it all yeah. just put iron to my fire, you know. Mm -hmm. And so far as, you know, proving proving to everyone that I can be. But again, yeah. if I did it in my 20s, so I built this this e-commerce business in my 20s, now in my 30s, I actually, I'm, I'm, I changed again. And I, and I actually mm -hmm. believe slightly different things or completely different things. You know, that yeah. money can buy you happiness. No amount, like, no, like, statues, being a CEO, COO, or driving a luxurious yeah. car. Yeah. It's not, well, to, for me personally, it's not something that makes me feel alive. It does not, does not bring me happiness. And uh, I'm lucky enough that I realize that now, you know, and I'm actually lucky and thankful to my co-founder that he helped me to leave because maybe he, mm. he also saw that I was not... I was misplaced. It wasn't my place to do an yeah. administrative part of a business because I'm a creator. I like create things and inspire people, not sit in the office and streamline the business processes. And um, I'm thankful, actually. And I'm lucky to have people like him and people who helped me along the way and the challenges that I had, including some psychological challenges, some some addiction problems that I had because it, well, yeah. it was all an attempt to escape the reality. And you don't want to be living in the reality that you want to escape. Yeah. That's the last thing you want to do. No amount of money or uh, entertainment will aid your, your problem. To, that, you know, that you're, not, that you're not living your life. So for everyone who listens to this now, I, I, I just want to say that you owe it to yourself. You owe, you need to find something that fulfills you, that, that you would do without money, without sleep, that yeah. you want to get up in the morning and go do, you know? Yeah. And you don't yeah. call it the work, you call it life. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. sick and yeah. tired of this work-life balance kind of thing. <laughs> you got life, you know? And you either enjoy yeah. it or you don't enjoy it. It's just it's that some things just bring you money. So right now, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I'm at this yeah. place. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you, you, you mentioned that you are thankful to your partner. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure when, when the incident happened, that, was, <laughs> that might not have been the perspective. That's the, that's How, the part of me that grew right now and yeah. and accept that it's like it's uh, similar similarly to accepting uh, my father for example you know yeah 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 I had problem with my my dad because he didn't believe yeah. in me because he wanted me to live the life that maybe he didn't live maybe he wanted me mm -hmm. to com compensate for his shortcomings or whatever but. Yeah. Now I'm, it's all about acceptance. So I, I love my yeah. parents. I accept my parents. I talk to my dad. Yeah. He ain't getting me, yeah. but I still try to tell things that <laughs> will make him like feel good, whatever, and listen to him, to whatever nonsense that he says. But I listen to it, you know? Uh, <laughs> so, and same thing, the same thing with my partner. Right back then, I, I couldn't stand the guy. The, the tension was so so reprehensible in the, in the yeah. office. I didn't look him in the eyes when I shook yeah. his hand. When I walked, I walked into the, every single day, I, I let him know that I, I, I don't know if I hated him, but we, 
definitely didn't like each other so much. But yeah, but it takes time to heal wounds and come to this realization that some things happened for a reason. Yeah. How, how was that process like? Did you figure it out on your own? Was what did did it take you to write about things? Oh man, actually yes, I'm a writer. Actually, I do okay. write, and yeah, yeah. I think that writing. I first started writing as 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 uh, these these little notes that I didn't share, mm -hmm. like a diary, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. then I realized that this is such a powerful self reflection tool that some yeah. people can learn from from these revelations that I put on paper and yeah. I got pretty in cool response from people that dude that's amazing because you put so much emotion into this stuff that that yeah that actually my number one key to efficient writing you gotta <laughs> feel something for what you're saying it's like uh, this emotional writing is is absolutely incredible of course, if you have a way with words, if you just, if, you, if you're like, but yeah, but I think it will help to feel something, feel uh, real things about what you're saying. And uh, yeah. it helped me abundantly to understand and, and you read back, you revisit your articles from a year ago, two years ago, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you see the evolution of yourself. It's like your log, the log of your personality. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good very good question and uh, yeah, absolutely writing helped me so much. And also people who are not afraid to give you the blunt truth who mm -hmm. love you dearly and they just tell you that dude like there's something with mm -hmm. you and uh, you 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 like and yeah, and, and it's 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 great to have these people who can tell you things that you won't like in the moment, but Ultimately, you will understand that they wanted just good goodness for you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm, I'm listening to everything you are saying, right? From right from the childhood to where you are right now. Do you also like look look at your entire life and sometimes you know just tell yourself like how how on planet Earth did I did I pull everything off? You know. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, man. That 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 kind of humbling. I don't know. It's like I I do understand the hard work hard side of things, right? Like when I when I share what I'm doing, it kind of feels you know I'm working really hard. And yes, we all are. Everyone is working hard. Okay? Yeah, I'm not saying no to that. But for things to work out, right? I I have a Understanding that it takes more than just working hard. It's a grind, man. You have to grind yeah, through. Yeah. It's just, um, I don't know if you, I don't know if entrepreneurs, like if you, if are born or are made, probably both, maybe a little bit of both. You know, it just you just really, you just really want. You just have, really have to want. You know this something. You really, you gotta understand what you want, and it's best when what you want is not the this identical like this measurable objective. It's not a car. It's not a private jet. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. For me, my main value right now is freedom, mm. and I'll explain freedom in a way that I can say whatever the hell I want, I can do yeah. whatever the hell I want, you know, and in a way that I want. So. You see, and I don't even know to w what result I'm going to get, to what result I'm going to get. But I just do it, it categorically in a way that I enjoy and I feel like it's the right way, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it will take me somewhere. I'm sure I'm going to get to beautiful results. But when you set this, this threshold, this objective, and you go to it, you might be blind to things that happen along the way. And you might be yeah, blind yeah, to yeah. the opportunities that arise. For example, like this podcast. Every single time you talk to a new human, human being, there is just a yeah. countless number of opportunities. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's okay to set objectives. It's okay to, to hit their numbers. But again, not yeah. at the expense of 
your life, not at the expense of the joy in the moment and understanding that sometimes these little opportunities can bring, yield you much bigger results than, than the result yeah. that you're actually getting to, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure there were times in your childhood, right, when you as a child were questioning as to how will things work out? Like, when you are a child, when you are just getting started, right, everything is a question mark. So if, if you were to yeah, go back, right, and, and talk to yourself, or even if you meet like a younger person who is just getting started, like, what what kind of things would you like to, you know, share with them? I would say that every, everything happens for a reason. And it's okay to feel awful and feel down but it but you should never stop doing something like it's not a, even if you run one of my mentors say that it's it's even okay to run in circles as long as you run so mm -hmm. you just have to be active you just have to have this mindset but you're gonna that you do things and and actually that you're stronger than you think. I would say that you are stronger that you, than you think. I, mm -hmm. I actually, I always heard, kind of discounted myself, my willpower. I, for some reason, I thought that I'm not, I'm not made of like the things that would help me get through all the, these challenges and all these sufferings. But I yeah. would remind myself that actually all, each of us is capable of amazing things and um, psychologically all the things that we go through they make us stronger so yeah. we just have to give it a time and 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 dip our toes to new things try new things even the more uncomfortable they are you know the thing is yeah the more uncomfortable the thing that you do the the higher the probability that that's actually the thing that you should do right so yeah. I not because yeah, you grow as you do things that so are, are so uncomfortable. Of course, of course, not to an extent that it's like unbearable. Maybe it's not, but still, if you feel like the way to do it is tough thing to do, go do it mm -hmm. and you will grow. And 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 the another lesson lesson is to reflect, reflect on your life, and yeah, and not be afraid to pivot. You know, a lot mm. of startups yeah. start with one idea but they pivot to something completely different. Or as you said, that you were, this podcast was born as a result of you just doing research and talking to a lot of people for your business. So you were yeah, not yeah. afraid to pivot. So I think we're, we should yeah. not be afraid to pivot, you know, change the direction of our business or our career uh, in midway. And right before this, right, you also mentioned that you need to understand what you want. Mm -hmm. And for you, uh, that is freedom right now. Yeah. But, you know, every now and then, right, if whenever I'm talking to, you know, younger people or even older people for that matter, the big question is, how do you know what you want? <laughs> yeah, that's, I think, uh, one of the, the hardest the, questions. The, yeah, like yeah. the businesses are trying to pull you in one direction. The culture is trying to pull you in, in some other direction. Your friends and family are pulling you in the third direction. So what, what would you say to that? So I think uh, I, I, I follow the uh, philosophy of Simon Sinek. He's like one of my favorite uh -huh. speakers. Uh -huh. And he says that the robust approach, you know, not robust, but the uh, reliable way of thinking about this is understanding your values. So you might not want know the thing that you want, but you you should, as, 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 as soon as possible in your life, you should try to understand your core values, right? Mm. And with, in every, with every single decision, difficult decision that you're making, you, you should not betray your values. Values could mm. be like transparency or um, honesty or taking care of other people not doing some harm to other people. So I think th th things that you know are your core values can be helpful 
in understanding what you want. But it just it yeah. takes an amount of time to introduce yourself to different professions or introduce yourself to different business. Talk to a lot of yeah. people to understand where is this alignment between your values and the things that the world needs. Because when you mm. have this alignment, right, you can't you can't find a beautiful profession before you know it exists, right? That's why I say, yeah, I, yeah. I give us this advice to people: just go meet people, go talk what they do, just to learn to research the wide array of things. It's unbelievable yeah. how many things there are now right now in existence that can make yeah, you yeah. Uh, rich or famous or whatever you want in your life, or just make good living or be a family person and have the financial uh, support. So it's just a matter of this alignment, but it's also a matter of awareness. So yeah, yeah, it's difficult part. Both of the, these things difficult. It took me uh, 15 years to finally get here where I, where I finally feel that seems like I'm in the right place. Seems like I smile more. I don't get stressed out. I do difficult t- things, but I, I like them. I like these challenges, you know. Just like you, we work hard, but we enjoy what we do. So we don't even uh, notice how hard do we work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this was this was fun. That was amazing, man. Thank you so much. You, you're, <laughs> you're, you, it's like it's a, your natural thing to do to open up a conversation. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I just wish nothing but the best to your podcast and thank you for uh, inviting me.